So today I'm talking about settling and sleep and babies and what self-settling is and what self-settling isn't. And there's a lot of discussion out there, thought out there about what self-settling is. So true self-settling with a baby is one that you can put down in the cot, fully awake, without a dummy, without being patted, without being rocked to sleep, without being shushed, without a comforter, without being swaddled, put them down fully awake and allowing them to put themselves to sleep. So this drowsy but awake business, you're either drowsy or you're awake. So I have a particular issue with the drowsy but awake saying that gets said out there. So babies must always go down fully awake in the cot and certainly by four months of age to avoid that four month sleep regression. So in England, we used to teach this at two to eight weeks, two to eight weeks postnatal. It was so easy. So teaching this when babies are really young, it, it takes a matter of a minute. Leaving it till about two to three months takes about 20 minutes on the first occasion if you've been holding and rocking and feeding to sleep. Leaving it till four months takes 40 minutes of crying. Leaving it till six to 12 months takes one to four hours of crying. So you can see how as time goes on, that learnt behaviour gets more and more and more. So this is why I'm doing this video today, because I feel I need to give you some information to empower you. And it helps you make decisions as a parent, what you want to do. And I'm sure most of you want to avoid that form of sleep regression. So, love little graphic here called the hierarchy of soothing. This came originally out of a psychology textbook. As most of you know, I've got a degree in psychology. I'm a midwife of 30 years, a lot of qualifications behind me. So I'm a bit of a nerdy geek when it comes to research and babies and sleep. So at the top is self-settling. That's where you're putting your, your babies put themselves fully, fully awake in the cot to sleep by themselves. And you've got voice to soothe. So voice is not, you know, is, it is not innocent. All right. If you did it for more than a week after four months and said, night, night, baby, it's OK. That would create a problem. Voice and been next to to soothe okay voice touch and been next to so if you touch them you sing to them and you're right there with them and talking to them that is trouble after after four months anything you do for, the, for a week that the baby can't do themselves after four months remember is a problem then you've got rocking and patting to sleep so many sleep consultants in australia rock and pat to sleep it's not self-settling that rock and pat is not there in 40 minutes time. The baby cannot rock and pat themselves. In 30 years, I have never rocked a baby to sleep, can I just add? And you'd think me as a midwife would have. Instead, we just hold them, put a hand on them if they're crying, pick them up, put them down, hand on. We don't rock and pat in England. And then you've got holding to sleep. And then look at the bottom. You've got breastfeeding to sleep, bottle feeding to sleep, dummy or pacifier, binky, whatever you want to call it, to sleep. So the reason that this one down the bottom is a big problem is because your dummy, um, your mouth, the breast, that, that oral space has got more touch um, and it's got more touch receptors and nerve endings than the rest of the body, even more than your hands. OK, so it's literally like crack taking that dummy or bottle or boob away. But it's not as hard as what you think. Yes, they cry a lot, but it takes about 12 hours to get rid of a bad dummy addiction. OK. So these things, binkies, dummies, pacifiers, um, what they're doing is they're calming the baby. The baby is not calming themselves. And so when we take these things away, it is allowing that baby to have a voice. Really important. So what these do is they plug in emotions. They plug in stress. So it's the opposite of what you think. It looks really attractive. You put your baby in the cot, you put the dummy pacifier binky in, and they go to sleep, but then it falls out after four months because at four months you've got the extrusion reflex, the sticky out tongue thing that happens around four months of age. Three months you've got hand awareness, those hands start going in that, in that mouth and they start to move around the cot. That's when these become the perfect storm. My worst dummy addictions were falling out every quarter of an hour at night time. And that baby cried for 12 hours out of 14. It was really hard. But after that, he went down for his morning nap, no crying. So if you need to know more, the online Nurture Sleep Programme, um, which covers um, everything from zero 
So basically newborn to five years of age gives you videos, talks you through things, and it's a learning management system. It's not a PDF. It's actually done in a really easy to understand way. And you get support from me in the online Facebook group, um, which is a closed Facebook group. So these binkies, these dummies, these pacifiers look attractive, but by three to four months, seriously think about getting rid of them. And you will thank me for that, <laughs> I promise you. So little video from Karen. Hope that's really helped you all. And hope you're all having a lovely week. So bye from me.